Uh, and I love the subhead. Dems couldn't care less about real issues. What is what a what a headline there? Uh, there's only one problem with that line of the attack. The issue Van says Ryan is ignoring has been really the main focus of his entire campaign. Take a look. This is an opportunity for us, one, to reduce inflation. The Inflation Reduction Act also drives down uh, our deficit. One of the big drivers of inflation, and so the Inflation Reduction Act, since the Inflation Reduction Act, natural gas uh, was a big part of the Inflation Reduction Act. I put the natural gas provisions in the Inflation Reduction Act. I was the one who made sure we had all of the investments in electric vehicles in the Inflation Reduction Act. Stream of investments directly after the Inflation Reduction Act. I don't know how much clearer this could be. And Congressman Ryan joins us now. Um, so you're not talking about inflation enough, I guess. Uh, so how is the, uh, how, how, how does, how do you campaign uh, with somebody who, First of all, is post-truth, lives in this post-truth Trump world, who once said Trump was America's Hitler and now praises uh, Trump, and who claims to be a conservative but says that the federal government should seize Brookings Institute, all of its assets, and other think tanks, and the federal government should, should, should just seize and take control of institutions that disagree with their Trump worldview. How, how, how do you, I've never had to do that, actually. How, how do you campaign <laughs> against somebody that, well, sort of sounds like a fascist if you're talking about seizing, like, think tanks that disagree with you? You, you know, uh, Joe, thanks for the opportunity to be here. You, you just stay focused. Like, we have been focused on the economy for the last 18 months since I announced last April. How do we get a tax cut to workers to help put a little money in their pocket uh, to be able to deal with the inflation issue? How do we focus on, you know, the things I mentioned there in the debate, like the Inflation Reduction Act, the Infrastructure Bill, the CHIPS Act? Ohio is front and center in dominating these industries of the future. We just saw Honda announce a $4 billion battery plant up where I'm from, my congressional district. We have five different vehicles in the old General Motors Lordstown plant, all electric two or three cars, a truck, and a tractor with a battery plant across uh, the street. So we're focused on how do we bring back manufacturing? How do we focus on the economy? How do we give a tax cut to workers uh, to help them ride out the inflation and really try to dismiss JD as being an extremist weirdo, which of course he is, and everybody knows it now. You gotta remember, they spent about $15 million on uh, Trump's America's uh, Hitler to he kisses his ass and then all of a sudden uh, Trump endorses him. Like people in Ohio have been hearing about J.D. Vance's fraudulence uh, since the Republican primary, and we're just building on it, and that's why we're going to win this thing. Ohio is not a radical state like J.D. Vance is. Hey, Congressman, uh, in your congressional district, as well as a lot of other congressional districts in Ohio, I assume there are going to be more and more workers in between the ages of 48, 55, who have either been laid off, lost their jobs, or whatever. A lot of the Democrats running for office around this country basically tell these people, don't worry about it. We're going to send you to get a master's degree in mechanical engineering and bring you back into the workforce. What do you what do you do to these tell these people who are in that netherworld of having lost employment or reduced employment? What do you tell them? Well, we got a lot going on now, Mike. Like I was out at the General Motors Lordstown plant, the old General Motors Lordstown plant now owned by Foxconn. We were announcing a tractor, an electric tractor used for farming, used for vineyards, used for specialty crops. And I met a guy who lost his job at a place called Denman Tire about 15 uh, years ago or so. He's now working for Foxconn. He was so excited. He has such a good job. He knows he's going to have security. So what we're seeing now, you know, 1,500 jobs at the battery plant. We're seeing the CHIPS Act that's going to lead to 100 a billion dollar investment in Ohio, it's gonna take about 7,000 union construction workers uh, to build that thing. And then 5,000 for the next 10 years, like our, our union construction guys between natural gas, the infrastructure bill, and these new projects, people are going back to work. People have good paying jobs and we just gotta 
we got to keep it going. We got to give them a tax cut in the short term to absorb the inflation because these construction guys are still driving, uh, you know, so they're, they're, they're paying, you know, 385 or whatever the gas uh, may be. So we still got to put some money in their pocket in the short term, but the jobs are coming and they're the jobs of the future. And this has been my plan for 20 years on how do we get the, the steel belt that went to the rust belt to become voltage valley or a tech belt. And that's why we're going to win this race, Mike. Like, we are doing it. And J.D. Vance has no clue. We need, you know, he's got two big donors, Mitch McConnell and Peter Thiel. We have 350,000 low-dollar donors. So we're asking people to continue to fuel this campaign. Go to timforoh.com and chip in a few bucks. And we're going to bring this thing home and shock the world. Congressman, good morning. On that question of raising a few bucks, you have campaigned and worked your way into a, a tie in this race, in a state that a lot of people had said it's gone red, it was plus eight for Donald Trump. Uh, Tim Ryan doesn't have a chance. You're in a tie right now. The last time we spoke to you a few weeks ago, you expressed some frustration that national Democrats were not pouring money into the state and into the campaign in a place you believe you can win. Have you received now, finally, in these final weeks, more support from national Democrats, given how important your race is? No, no, we're, we're out here on why? our own, you know, with, with, with these. What's that? Why is that? Why, why do you suspect that is? No, no, no idea, uh, Willie. I've been coming on your show for a long time, and it started with complaints about the, the strategic decisions uh, in branding and uh, about the National Democrats. And I it just, you know, I have uh, come to grips with the fact that we got to do this on our own. But I kind of love it, you know. I mean, I'm I'm a, I'm a fighter from the Mahoning Valley. Like I like the fact that I'm running into this campaign, kicking JD's ass, got him on the run with a bunch of grassroots supporters in Ohio, 350,000 donors, uh, organized labor has stepped up in a big way, member to member contact. We're going to do this thing, and if they come in, fine. But I'm not. I'm not begging anybody to say, you know, I'm a good candidate. Like we don't beg for help in Ohio. We go out and kick some rear end, and that and that's what's happening here. And I'm telling you, JD Vance is on the run. This guy has upset the Ukrainian community, which is a hundred thousand people at least in Ohio. He's uh, offended women. Uh, with his national abortion ban and the fact that he thinks women should stay in violent relationships that he th called rape inconvenient, mm -hmm. like women are coming out the vote, early vote for Democrats is up. We're going to do this thing and we're going to do it with a bunch of grassroots people. And that's how Ohio does things. Grind it out, work harder than J.D. Vance while he's, you know, sipping wine and eating cheese. I'm, I'm taking a bus up and down the Ohio River and that's why we're going to win. Congressman Ryan, you just laid out a pretty devastating <clears throat> argument against your opponent. But a lot of Democrats I'm talking to here in Washington want to hear, not just from you, but from Democrats across the country, the positive message. Make the case. So do that now. Give us your positive closing argument for your candidacy. I'm the most Ohio candidate here by far. J.D. Vance abandoned the state. He went to California and became a vulture capitalist and is a puppet to Peter Thiel and Mitch McConnell, who have given him $55 million. We are seeing the benefits of the initiatives that I've been pushing. The bipartisan infrastructure bill is gonna create 600,000 jobs in Ohio. The CHIPS Act is landing a $100 billion investment from Intel and other companies to dominate the industries of the future around chip manufacturing. The Inflation Reduction Act, which I pushed very hard, is gonna allow us to uh, increase natural gas production, hopefully liquefy it, ship it to our allies in Europe, maybe ship it to China so that we can get the world hooked off, uh, get off of this dirty energy. And since the Inflation Reduction Act, we've seen huge investments into Ohio in electric vehicles, solar panels up in Toledo. Again, the chips manufacturing, Honda just announced the $4 billion uh, investment. We're, we got a lot of positive things going on and J.D. Vance wants to turn the clock back. So again, go to Tim uh, for OH.com, send us a few bucks. And we'll come back uh, on election night with a big victory. Congressman Tim Ryan, Ohio's Democratic nominee for U.S. Senate in a dead heat with 13 days until Election Day with J.D. Vance. Congressman, thanks so much for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you.